Did you know that one in eight women will develop thyroid disease at some point in their lifetime? And with this many women being affected by thyroid disease, it's so important to educate yourself about natural treatment options that you're probably not aware of. It's also important to understand how some of the medications that you may be taking may be contributing to an undetected or even missed thyroid problem. I'm Dr. Heigmeyer, and today I want to discuss with you how your birth control pills and the hormones found in the pill can negatively affect your thyroid gland. Why does this matter to you? Okay, well, let's say you're a woman who's been suffering with heavy bleeding, uh, painful cramping, brain fog, uh, you're passing heavy blood clots every month, you're becoming anemic, uh, low iron levels, you have tender breasts, and any other symptom that you can think of related to a hormonal imbalance. Chances are, if this has happened to you, you're going to make an appointment with either your OBGYN or your primary care doctor, and they're most likely going to prescribe the pill. This is such a common practice that I believe it's one of the main reasons why thyroid disease is absolutely at epidemic levels. Now, I want you to listen to this, okay? 62% of women that are of reproductive age are taking birth control pills, and regardless of the reason on why you're taking them, whether it's because you uh, are taking it intentionally and you're trying to prevent an unwanted pregnancy, or you're taking it for the purpose of regulating a menstrual cycle that's irregular, one thing for certain is that the pill will affect your thyroid. Now I want you to think about this uh, one and I want you to think this through with me. You have these symptoms that I just mentioned earlier. Heavy bleeding, menstrual cramping, brain fog, uh, heavy blood clots, uh, anemia, tender breasts, depression. You visit your doctor and your doctor puts you on birth control pills in the hopes that it's going to regulate your cycle and fix these problems. But in a few months or a few years, you start gaining weight and you start experiencing terrible fatigue and you start having joint pain and you start developing bloating and other IBS symptoms. You can't think straight. Your periods become heavier, maybe more irregular. And before you know it, you're now being prescribed a medication for your thyroid. This is our healthcare system. Rather than looking at what's causing the hormonal imbalance and addressing it at the root cause, a synthetic unnatural hormone was used and that created more disease in your body and in this particular case thyroid disease or gastrointestinal problems. Now I don't know about you but to me it's kind of like sweeping the dirt under the rug rather than taking the dirt outside. Consider this, studies show that thyroid medications that contain thyroxine uh, such as levothyroxine or synthroid are linked to bone loss and even osteoporosis. So if you're taking too much thyroid medication or your thyroid is not being properly managed, you are at an increased risk for bone loss, uh, risk for hip and spinal fractures. Something to think about if you're a person who is on a daily basis dealing with chronic pain. Now, birth control pills have also been shown to cause an overgrowth in bacteria in the small intestines. We call this SIBO but they've also been shown to cause gut dysbiosis in the large intestines. And this is why if you're a woman who's suffering with bloating and constipation and frequent gas um, and other IBS symptoms, it's important to understand what the link might be. Now, I would bet many of you watching this video are saying, geez, Dr. Hagmar, you've really just literally just described my, my health story, my life story to the T. And so how do I know all this? Well, I, can begin, I can't begin to tell you how often I see this in practice and I see this progression unfold with so many of my patients who eventually start looking and turning towards natural treatment options for their health problems. So what do you need to do about, or what do you need to know about birth control pills and thyroid disease? Well, there are five main ways that the pill can interfere and block thyroid function and that I want you to be aware of and that we're gonna discuss in today's video. I'll tell you what those are and then if you're interested, you can continue watching it and I'll get into a a uh, deeper and greater understanding to help you uh, navigate through this area. Um, continue watching this video where I'll go through again just more detail about these these issues. Now the number one uh, way that birth control pills block thyroid function is that they rob your body of crucial nutrients and minerals that are needed for proper thyroid function. That's right the pill is downright it's a thief it mugs your body of certain vitamins and minerals. Number two, if estrogen dominance doesn't already exist, when you start taking the pill, it will create a situation where your levels of estrogen and progesterone favor excessive estrogen, and this can lead to things like cancer and blood clots and headaches and, again, gastrointestinal complaints. It can lead to hair loss. It can lead to irritability. 
and it can lead to weight gain, okay, all estrogen dominant uh, related symptoms. Number three, uh, the third way that the pill uh, affects thyroid is that it can cause low T3 or what we call thyroid underconversion. But you'll never know it because if your doctor only tests your TSH, you're never going to see where your T3 levels are or your free T3 levels. Okay, so we'll get into more detail uh, about that in here in just a moment. The fourth way the pill interferes with thyroid function is it blocks the uptake of thyroid hormones actually into the cells. And finally, reason number five is it can increase something called thyroid binding globulin uh, or TBG. Okay, it's very important that this test is actually done when you get your thyroid levels tested. Okay, um, what else do you need to know? Well. Let's unpack some of these first, and then we'll get into a couple of other things that I want you to know about what you can do to, to start improving this. Okay, so let's unpack this. So problem number one we talked about was that the pill impacts thyroid function uh, in a way that the pill, with its high doses of synthetic estrogen, uh, like I mentioned ago, robs the body of nutrients needed for, again, proper thyroid function. So again, it's going to leave you in this hypothyroid state. When the thyroid produces thyroid hormones, it's going to produce... Uh, inactive thyroid hormone called T4, and it's also going to make T3, which is the active form. And finally, it also makes something called reverse T3. In fact, your body needs to convert T4 into T3, and this is where those nutrients that you're being robbed of by taking the birth control pill come into the story. All right? Birth control pills deplete, again, those vital nutrients such as selenium and zinc. The reasons why selenium is so important is that it's a major cofactor that activates the enzyme that's needed to convert T4 into T3. Selenium also helps break down elevated levels of reverse T3 when there are things like chronic stress going on in your life. So when you have deficiencies in selenium because you're taking the pill, you're often going to wind up with low T3 levels and elevated levels of reverse T3. I also mentioned that zinc is also depleted when you take birth control pills. Now, Numerous studies show that zinc helps the production of T3, as well as activating your thyroid receptors. Just by depleting zinc and selenium alone, okay, the birth control pill can prevent you from converting T4 into T3. It can downregulate the sensitivity of the thyroid receptor. And finally, it can cause high levels of reverse T3. This is without a doubt, this is a disaster in the making for so many women, all right? The pill also interferes with B vitamins, okay? It interferes with B2, B6, uh, folate, and it interferes with B12 levels. And deficiencies in these vitamins can cause a variety of health problems ranging, ranging from anemia, uh, low iron levels, anxiety, depression, sleeping problems, and then of course, inflammation within the body. So problem number one with the pill is that you make less of it, you convert less of it, and then you use less of it. Okay, so that alone is enough to advise against taking the pill if you have a known thyroid condition. All right? Now, if you want to know more about the vitamins needed to properly support thyroid function, there's a video that I did that goes into a lot more detail about the kinds of vitamins above and beyond the ones we just spoke about, um, but also goes into uh, just a lot of other details as it relates to uh, nutrient, vitamins, and minerals. Okay? Problem number two with the pill is its effects on thyroid function we said was estrogen dominance. All right? Now, if estrogen dominance doesn't already exist, it will when you start taking the pill. Many women these days are being overloaded with estrogen. All right? Now, if you're a woman and you went on the pill to regulate your cycle or you're a woman in that menopausal state, perimenopausal state, most likely you are either estrogen dominant or you are in a relative state of estrogen dominance. Okay? The pill blocks your body from ovulating, right? And if you don't ovulate, you won't produce sufficient amounts of progesterone. And every month that goes by where you don't ovulate and you don't produce progesterone, that creates a greater imbalance uh, between your estrogen and your progesterone levels. And so your estrogen levels accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. That puts more stress on your liver. And that, again, impacts thyroid function, OK? The other thing is that this can also cause heavy bleeding to occur, okay, when you don't produce sufficient amounts of progesterone. Now, there are three main ways that estrogen dominance affects your thyroid, and it's very, very important that if you are a woman um, with hormonal imbalances that you get a test called thyroid binding globulin, okay, TBG for short. It's very important that you get this test done. The pill will often increase thyroid binding globulin, and that's a problem in and of itself. So let me kind of explain that just for a moment here. All the hormones in your body travel around your blood that are, and, and they're bound to certain carrier proteins. Okay?
okay? These protein carriers are like taxi cabs, all right? The thyroid taxi cab is thyroid binding globulin, or TBG. Now, the higher your thyroid binding globulin goes, the more taxi cabs that are, are made in order to pick up those thyroid hormones. Now, when you have too much of these taxi cabs, eventually what's going to happen is you're going to have low T3 levels. It, that T3 is not going to be available to the cell. And again, if we remember what T3 is, T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. So when you feel lousy and you're depressed and you're losing your hair and you're tired and run down all the time and you can't think straight, most likely that's caused by low T3 levels. Now, in cases like this, you have to correct the estrogen dominance in order to correct the levels of thyroid binding globulin. It's not enough to take more T3 and dump more and more T3 into the system like I see so many doctors uh, on the internet talking about, all right? There's so much more to this. Now, the second way estrogen dominance uh, caused by the pill interferes with thyroid function is again with interfering with the conversion of T4 into T3. And that's going to leave you with all those symptoms again of low T3. Hopefully, what you're starting to see here is that thyroid hormone uh, or the thyroid gland shuts down and no longer produces thyroid hormones but we need to ask why it's doing what it's doing. Simply dumping armor or cytomel or nature thyroid or some other T3 combination is not the solution to addressing the root cause. We never simply look at just the levels and say this is low or this is high, uh, take less thyroid medication, take more T3. This does not address the root cause, right? And that probably sounds very familiar to many of you. And unfortunately, this is probably what your doctor is doing and it's also the reason why you're probably suffering and not getting better. Again, I want you to think about root causes. You're only treating the symptom by taking thyroid hormones. You have not figured out why the thyroid hormone is not capable or it's unable to produce those hormones or to convert those hormones, okay? So what do you do if you're on the pill um, and you have a thyroid condition? Well, there are six important steps that I believe are so important. Number one, and I have to say this, is never stop taking any medication that's been prescribed to you unless the prescribing doctor advises you to do so. All right? I have to say that that's a disclaimer. All right? Number two, make sure you don't have the nutritional deficiencies that we talked about today. Again, these are things you can easily test for, and I highly suggest you watch the video I did a while back that goes into detail and, and explains about those vitamins, the symptoms that some of those vitamin deficiencies and mineral deficiencies can cause, and again, how specifically they affect thyroid function. Now, a lot of people think a one-day multivitamin uh, will take care of all that, and I'm here to tell you that it, it won't even scratch the surface, okay? You have to be tested for these things. Multivitamin doesn't cover it. Number three, get your hormone levels tested. You want to make sure that you can rule out estrogen dominance if you've been on the pill. But here's the key. You want your hormones tested not only in blood, but you also want them tested in saliva as well. If you're a woman who's menstruating, okay, taking a one blood draw sample of your hormones is not very effective, okay? So understanding your hormones with a blood test is not the best way to, to uncover a uh, hormonal imbalance, okay? You also need to have your sex hormone binding globulin levels tested. This is very, very important. So SHBG, sex hormone binding globulin. If you need help with getting your hormones tested, you can always reach out to us and we can help you get that done. Number four, uh, get a complete thyroid panel done, including thyroid binding globulin. So we have sex hormone binding globulin, but we also now have thyroid binding globulins, okay? You want both of those done. Now, this is a panel. Um, this is a panel. Uh, well, first off, I should say, you want to get a complete thyroid panel done. Again, this is a panel that's going to look at um, all of the thyroid markers and help you identify or help the doctor you're working with identify which pattern of thyroid disease you have. And this is really a very, very critical component to um, receiving proper treatment. All right. So please don't rely on your doctor's test of a TSH as the indicator of thyroid function. This test by itself is very unreliable. All right. Now, without a complete thyroid panel, you're really guessing about what patterns are present. And without knowing the cause, you can't begin to implement a treatment plan that will be customized to you. Number five, a while back I put together a guide and it's been downloaded, I want to say almost 30,000 times. It explains these patterns. It goes into the six patterns of thyroid disease that don't show up on, on standard thyroid testing. It goes into a lot of other details that I want you to be aware of, okay? So um, 
I get emails every, every day from people all over the world who have downloaded it and they are so thankful for it. So again, download it, it's free, won't cost you anything. If you're watching this video on YouTube, what you want to do is you want to visit my website or, and go to the section uh, that says thyroid and you'll be able to find that guide that's available there. And finally, number six, understand that when you're diagnosed with thyroid disease, you need to think outside the box, right? Your doctor uh, needs to be a detective. You're rarely going to be dealing with solely a thyroid problem, right? I want you to think about this too as we close today's video. If you're only dealing with a thyroid problem, then simply taking thyroid medication, uh, you would feel so much better, right? You'd feel infinitely better. But if you're one of those patients who's taking thyroid medication day in and day out, and you feel the same or you're getting worse, obviously your problem is bigger than your thyroid, all right? So taking a thyroid replacement, thy thyroid medication, and I don't care what kind it is, it's not going to fix because it's not going to be addressing the bigger issue at hand, all right? So there you go. Hope you enjoyed today's video, learning more about uh, the many ways that the pill interferes with thyroid function. Uh, make sure if you like today's video that you comment below, and if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to that. Uh, until next time, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. Take care.